Hello everyone and welcome back to Computer Vision Lecture Series. This is Lecture 6, Part 1. In this lecture, we are going to talk about uh, various camera calibration techniques. So, let's, let's begin. Um, in the beginning, we will see what transforms mean, what kind of transforms are possible uh, and their associated degrees of freedom. And then we will try to see how we can model the real world coordinates to camera coordinates. Before that, before we move on to the main camera estimation, camera parameter estimation techniques, uh, we want to ask the basic questions that are that are possible, right? So, if you have an image of the real world, um, basically you want to know things like how tall is this woman in this particular image, or how is high is your camera, or what at what angle is at uh, the camera at with respect to the world, and uh, which ball is closer so if we are able to model the camera parameters or we are able to find the camera parameters then we will be able to answer all these questions easily so the next step would be to basically see how we can model the real world coordinates uh, into camera into image coordinates via camera parameter estimation um, before we go there uh, we want to we want to standardize our method right and we have discussed the pinhole camera model in the previous uh, lectures uh, we are going to continue assuming that we are uh, doing our analysis based on the pinhole camera model basically where you have this uh, pinhole camera where you have the camera center this is uh, the image of uh, the real world image uh, and the, there is an image plane where you have your image coordinates and these are the world coordinates and the relationship between them is represented by this equation where small x is the coordinates of uh, uh, in the image plane of the object and capital X is the uh, coordinates of the um, object in the real world R and T represent rotation and transformation uh, of the object in the real world so they are uh, considered uh, extrinsic parameters whereas K is um, K relates to the focal length the shear um, and uh, uh, other uh, like camera centers and things like that uh, they are considered the intrinsic parameter of the camera um, so this matrix that we are able to generate here is considered as the projection matrix and our main task will be to estimate this matrix um, because we already know the world coordinates and uh, the image coordinates then how do we um, uh, use the, that information to find the or estimate the um, camera matrix or the projection matrix that's our main task uh, we in, in that pursuit we are going to take use of homogeneous coordinates we saw how homogeneous coordinates can be helpful and they allow projection to be represented as a matrix multiplication which makes it makes our uh, lives easier because um, there are a lot of libraries available in MATLAB in Python uh, in tensor and there are a lot of tensor libraries which uh, handle matrix multiplications and uh, analysis with mat matrices quite well and that's the reason why we convert uh, the projections to homogeneous coordinates uh, in doing so we are also modeling uh, or approximating our camera uh, and we are neglecting certain distortions like barrel and pin cushion distortions that we discussed before uh, but we have to remember that this can be caused by uh, dif the different uh, shutter speeds and the um, um, uh, sizes of the shutter. So uh, just keep these things in mind and we go ahead. So what are transformation, image transformations or parametric global turf transformations? Uh, it's represented by uh, T and P dash is the transformed image. P is the original image and the transformation is represented as P prime uh, equals to T uh, of P. Uh, These transformations are such that they apply to the global, uh, they apply uh, globally to all the pixels in the input image. So let's say if you are uh, stretching this image, uh, every pixel is a stretch along the uh, Y direction and X direction and that's how this transformation is um, uh, represented and uh, the globalness of T is basically that every point in P uh, is um, affected by this transformation um, 
for linear transformations we can represent t as uh, a matrix uh, on the right hand side as we can see this is x and y are the original image coordinates and x dash y dash or x prime y prime are the transformed image coordinates this is a way of representing the transformations in a smaller equation we can represent it as uh, p uh, p prime equals to t of p and uh, there are various forms of transformation and as, as you can imagine uh, the common transforms as you can uh, see is uh, like translation the image is shifted in x or y direction to certain values or rotation mm, quite simple to understand or scaling you scale the x or and y um, axis of your image or x and y uh, dimensions of your image and affine is basically uh, includes uh, um, a combination of translation, rotation and scaling uh, as well as uh, some shear um, values also and uh, perspective transformation we have already seen how uh, the camera is able to capture the real world um, 3D into 2D so 3D to 2D is generally considered as a perspective transformation uh, these are the common kind of transformations. Uh, let's look at each of them uh, briefly and what do they actually mean. Scaling means uh, scaling a coordinate uh, either in X or Y or in both the direction. Um, if you apply the scaling in both X and Y uh, dimension, it is considered as uniform scaling as is um, represented here. That you multiply the um, uh, image with uh, uh, a factor of 2 in X and Y direction both. And the image size increases that's uh, con considered uniform scaling if the components multiplied are uh, same for x and y but if you are multiply differently each uh, component then it's considered non-uniform scaling uh, so we can represent scaling as um, in x and y direction as um, so if you apply a scaling of factor of a along x direction it's represented like this and you can represent the scaling in a matrix form in a in a constrained smaller matrix form so if you see the scaling matrix uh, if you have an image which has uh, which is scaled from its original version you can represent the whole uh, operation uh, using this uh, matrix uh, relationship and all you need to do is uh, estimate a and b if you have all the x and y values of input and output uh, uh, images uh, clearly a and b are two different values to be estimated here so the degree of freedom that you have or the um, direction of the parameter or the dimensions that you need to estimate are two in this case rotation on the other hand a can be represented simply by um, these uh, equations uh, which are so if you consider x and y uh, axis uh, your x y point is transformed or rotated uh, uh, by an angular value of theta you can represent x prime as uh, um, a linear combination of x cos theta minus y cos sine theta and y prime as x sine theta plus y cos theta you can also represent this in the matrix form again like uh, like this so uh, x prime is cos theta minus x s cos theta minus uh, y sine theta and y prime is x sine theta plus uh, y cos theta so similarly all different 2d basic transformations can be represented in, in matrix as a matrix multiplications like scaling we saw here x x x x y is a general way of writing it the scaling in s in x direction as and scaling in y direction shear is um, uh, basically ex, uh, um, elongation or uh, uh, stretching of uh, uh, ex, uh, one axis um, by a scaling factor from the other axis so when you see this equation x prime will be x plus um, some scaled version of y so this will generate shear uh, similarly translation can be represented through home because translation being um, a non-linear operation you have to add uh, a homogeneous coordinate to represent it in a matrix form as we discussed earlier uh, so it's basically a combination of an identity matrix not a combination my mistake it's a concatenation of uh, an identity matrix of 2 cross 2 with uh, a column vector of uh, the translation in x and y direction and easily you can see x prime can be represented as x plus 
um, some translation value in x direction similarly y and affine as we already discussed affine is a combination of uh, the other 2d transformation and uh, it has more degrees of freedom uh, here you can see that a through f are um, six degrees of freedom in affine transformation so um, these are two different ways of writing the affine transformation um, uh, you can so both of them are equally valid uh, affine transforms are basically combinations of translations and linear transformation and therefore um, they, are, they, they are not uh, linear transformation basically uh, what are the properties of uh, affine transformation so when you when you have affine transforms um, the lines they map to lines parallel lines remain parallel ratios are preserved and they are closed under uh, composition what does uh, closed under composition mean from math mathematical uh, background if you have uh, or if you have studied image processing before you would know composition means um, um, that they can be applied um, so individual transformations can be applied one after the other resulting in the same kind of transformation this is a basically how um, uh, how it is represented in a way so this is the original image uh, when translated uh, when Euclidean transformation is like this uh, similarity transformation is repre represented like this projective transformation like this and affine transformation in this uh, shape um, in Cizleski uh, book you will find this in more details if you are uh, interested you should refer that uh, but for our discussion purposes I'll exp explain here what it means so you remember the camera uh, projection matrix which was uh, showing the relationship of the image coordinates to the real world coordinates or the scene coordinates written as small x equals to r um, uh, and uh, uh, sorry not r but um, it's written as a combination of uh, k which is the intrinsic parameter or interest intrinsic matrix and r and t concatenated which is an extrinsic parameters keep this in mind while we discuss um, uh, this table so for translation there is no k there is just an identity matrix concatenated with the translation matrix which size of 2 cross 3 and we saw that tx ty are the two degrees of freedom there uh, with translation everything is preserved essentially along with orientation so your image will look the same just uh, a bit shifted in either a direction or both direction depending on the values of t rigid or Euclidean transformation means um, uh, it has three degrees of freedom it essentially preserves all the lens so it can have some rotation as well as translation but it preserves everything uh, in addition to the lens uh, similarity transformation has some scaling factor involved along with some rotation uh, and therefore another degree of freedom is uh, added um, it still preserves the angles uh, affine transformation as we saw earlier is a combination of the previous and um, it preserves parallelism uh, in addition it has uh, six degrees of freedom whereas projective transformation which is um, a more generic transformation uh, for 3d to 2d um, uh, 3d to 2d 2d like uh, the image uh, from the scene to the image plane represented by h uh, it's a 3 cross 3 matrix and it has a degree of freedom uh, 8 degrees of freedom the only thing that projective transformation preserves uh, apart from the other these these, these things are not really uh, preserved uh, it preserves the straight lines so straight lines in the real world will be straight lines in the image plane so we are so when we are when we want to estimate the camera parameters we want to uh, projective transformation is the one uh, we are we are most interested in because projective transformation is the transformation that we do from the real world to the image plane and uh, how these parameters uh, camera parameters extrinsic as well as uh, intrinsic uh, relate uh, the real world coordinates to the image coordinates we are interested in that uh, when we study the projective transformation um, it is possible that uh, while estimating cam camera parameters we discover that certain of these transformations were um, identical uh, sorry not identical but um, uh, zeros or um, identities 
and therefore projective transformation could be reduced to either of these uh, transformations so uh, it's imp it's imperative that we study the projective transformation and then we will find the special cases um, where let's say if you have um, if there is no translation then the this t and the, the t vector becomes uh, zero if there is no rigid transformation rigid body transformation um, then the this r uh, matrix will also become zero and therefore our degrees of freedom will reduce and it will be easier for estimating the number of uh, for estimating the camera parameters um, yeah so let's go ahead uh, projective transformations so uh, projective transformations as we already know are combination of affine transformation and some projective warps um, in simplistic terms it can be written uh, as a relationship shown here with nine different um, uh, unknowns um, we will discover why it's, it has eight uh, degrees of freedom in because there are uh, certain values here which are um, uh, zeros or one and therefore they are predetermined therefore we have only eight degrees of uh, freedom um, projective transformations uh, line maps the lines to the lines so they preserve uh, lines the parallel lines are not uh, preserved we have already seen this when we were discussing um, um, uh, when we were discussing the projective uh, transformation in, in in the context of vanishing points and vanishing lines uh, we saw the vanishing lines uh, although they are parallel in the real world in the image they are not uh, parallel anymore and they actually meet at vanishing points and uh, we and uh, obviously because of that we can al also see how why ratios are not preserved we already saw how um, projective transformations are closed under compositions uh, and it's essentially um, projective transformation is modeling of uh, real world coordinates into image coordinates uh, it's like from 3d to 2d and it is more or less means change of basis and how do we do that change of basis we estimate the camera parameters or if we know the camera parameters we will know easily uh, this relationship and we will already know the sp different spaces that's the that these two images lie in and that is what it means uh, the change of basis uh, as I said before projective matrix can be represented in um, uh, with eight degrees of freedom uh, and that is one of the properties of projective transformations so um, let's go ahead and uh, revise our uh, basic uh, camera projection matrix here you can already see the uh, um, the real world coordinates here uh, with some rotation and transformation along with the camera parameters intrinsic matrix uh, you project the um, the um, uh, scene scene uh, objects onto the image plane and this relationship is uh, represented by this equation uh, x is the image coordinates in homogeneous uh, coordinates k is the intrinsic matrix of 3 cross 3 rotation matrix is 3 cross 3 translation is 3 cross 1 and world coordinates is a uh, x y z and 1 which is a uh, uh, represented in the homogeneous coordinates uh, essentially it is uh, this is how the actual individual parameters look like u0 v0 uh, represent the camera centers fx fy are the um, intrinsic parameters and uh, s is the shear intrinsic parameter of the camera so all these are intrinsic camera parameters fx fy representing the focal length in x and y direction and uh, rotation and translation are the extrinsic parameters represented by these values okay uh, we already seen this um, we have this rotation how if we add the translation uh, this is how it represents it is represented if, but if you add uh, if you want to see it in uh, in a concise matrix form you add a homogeneous coordinate to it and therefore you will be able to represent it in a, um, a direct matrix relationship mm, yeah we already also seen this uh, when you want to con convert the um, x and y coordinates to ho homogeneous you add just add one and if you want to convert from homogeneous coordinates you divide the last uh, dimension um, with the 
other remaining dimensions um, so what is projective uh, basically um, uh, a point or a, um, in the um, a point becomes a line so if you go from um, uh, so so if you go from uh, 2d to 3d uh, when you connect these points it becomes uh, a line that is what uh, this means so finally we reach here uh, how to calibrate the camera how um, it's also called as camera resectioning uh, this is the relationship um, we know if we know the xyz and if we know uv uh, values uh, all we need to do is estimate this m matrix here uh, which is um, a short form for k into r and t matrix uh, so we go ahead with the linear least squares regression um, why linear li least squares uh, regression because um, when you think of it what um, we have certain pairs of points we already know from the world coordinate and from the image coordinate and we want to fit a line that passes through it basically right so it's it's similar to fitting a line we know some per certain points and we want to find a line that passes through all these points right and uh, for this we uh, when you want to when, I, when you're fitting the line you're basically doing linear least squares regression to find the uh, slope and the um, uh, uh, slope and the uh, how, how do you call this uh, yeah, uh, my mistake I don't remember now but the intercept value yeah so when if you represent the line as y is equal to mx plus b m represents the slope of the line and b is the intercept uh, of the line so how do we do the linear uh, least squares uh, fitting for the line so let's say you have the um, these three different points lying here and you want to um, represent it uh, through a line that passes through or is a representative of these uh, these points so we assume that the line that passes is y equals to mx plus b for all the xi yi values so we have the data from 1 to n uh, and we have and we sum or uh, so we subtract yi um, minus mx minus b so we, so this is the error error values so for every point uh, we find the error values and we want to minimize this such that we will be able to find m and b values uh, that represents the line passing through all these points so uh, line fitting is uh, nothing but a minimization problem to find the slope and the intercept b and uh, this is how it is represented uh, when you expand these values uh, you can uh, instead of writing it um, as a uh, as a in, in this relationship you can convert into matrix relationship uh, in this form and uh, when you uh, if you remove this summation you can represent it as a, as a um, in a matrix uh, relationship where this uh, all the points are uh, your a uh, represented by a and mb is the um, the p vector that you want to estimate and it is subtracted by the y uh, vector so you can imagine that if you want to do a minimization of such a quadratic relationship all you have to do is equate it to zero and then find p equals to y divided by a but why are we not doing that right so the easiest answer to it is uh, we don't know the shape of a okay so in order to divide y by a a has to be um, a square matrix and non-singular matrix but we don't know always know that and it is not always the case uh, it is rarely the case that a is a non-singular uh, matrix why because a is represented by these points uh, and we chose to write the points in this form but if we chose a different form then it could have a different shape so the shape of a is not fixed that's the first reason why we can't uh, invert the matrix a uh, so uh, so what what we go what we do is we go ahead and expand this uh, relationship into in, in a vector um, matrix form and then you, we um, differentiate the relationship uh, partial uh, we differentiate the relationship with the unknown p and then we equate to zero here so we found this relationship and then uh, we do 
we, we take an inverse of this and then apply it on both the sides of the equation which reaches which uh, which essentially makes it uh, the value that we want to estimate p as equals to a transpose a the inverse of it multiply by a transpose and y and this is a closed form solution it's a very beautiful relationship because all you need to know is the a matrix and you already know the y matrix so when you do the um, computation or the pseudo inverse of this a transpose a and then multiply it with the transpose of a and uh, you will get the uh, you will get the p values matlab has a direct implementation of this relationship as a backslash y and if you are already pre computed a uh, or generated the a matrix you can just uh, use this relationship to compute uh, the unknown p so how do we solve uh, how do we use the same uh, kind of approach linear least squares uh, linear least squares regression for solving the translation uh, you represent each and every point uh, match points in two different images a and b uh, the relationship between them you represented it like this and then um, essentially what you do is uh, you find out the inverse of this and then uh, we, we already know x1b and x1a in both the images and then you invert this matrix and then you will be able to find the translation in each and every uh, direction this is a very simple uh, simple example for solving the translation um, a generic way of uh, solving translation is this you write down the objective function that you have uh, two ways of solving this either you use a derived solution by computing the derivative and then computing the solution or you have a computational solution where you write this uh, relationship in an ax equals to p form and then you use the closed form solution of uh, of p equals to a transpose a uh, pseudo inverse into a transpose a y um, to estimate the p matrix to find uh, to find the solution for your um, and then you will be able to find basically uh, tx and ty Similarly, for uh, solving uh, any generic transformation considered as rotation transformation uh, translation or scaling, we are representing it as T. Uh, T can be estimated like this in the same way that we discussed uh, in, a co in a computational manner. So the question uh, comes to the mind that if we are able to solve this, um, uh, this estimation problem or, or we are able to min uh, uh, minimize the um, uh, uh, the objective function and then um, compute our unknowns then why uh, um, why 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 is there still research going on <laughs> uh, I mean uh, imagine that you are able to do this uh, you, all you need to do is uh, compute certain relationship between the uh, you need to know which points are there in the image plane and which points are there in the real world plane and then it's easy to compute the relationship right uh, but it's not always so straightforward for example in this case uh, do you think these transformations that we have uh, applied here are, are they enough um, it's not easy to see here why because there are certain mis, um, misaligned uh, points for example this they are misaligned here and the angle is changed uh, the rotation there is some rotation there is some translation there is some affine transformations as well and therefore it's not easy another reason is uh, a very simplistic example is uh, that of vertical least squares so let's say you are uh, trying to estimate a vertical line in that case the slope tends to be infinity and it's not easy to estimate uh, this um, uh, this line because uh, infinity could be any value right we don't know what infinity means so um, also when you are um, doing uh, least squares for the vertical lines they are not rotation invariant and this is another pro uh, issue uh, it also of course uh, as I said uh, because it's not easy to estimate the uh, infinity value uh, it fails for vertical lines so we need uh, something more concrete solution for this right so uh, the solution uh, the answer to that is uh, is total least squares uh, what we do here is essentially we uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to find this line which is um, from which every point 
in your data lies um, uh, closest to right so we assume ax plus by equals to c uh, c equals to 0 is our line and uh, the unit normal is uh, a comma b where mm, uh, basically the distance of this point with the line can be given by this relationship magnitude of this uh, value and we sum over all these values to find the error or the objective function to minimize and now we have the relationship between uh, a b c and all the different points and we have this uh, energy function or the error function to minimize the relationship of uh, c can be written in the form as uh, a by n uh, in this in this manner and when we do a partial derivative of c uh, with respect to the um, so sorry the partial derivative of this uh, error uh, uh, function with respect to c we find this relationship and they can be converted and written into a matrix form like this where we again have this p matrix that we want to compute or estimate uh, it's a simple relationship here which is which is like uh, an a into p and when you do the square of that you uh, in a, met a vector matrix uh, form you can write it as p transpose a transpose a p uh, a very name solution would be equals to zero where a and p bo um, a, a is equal to zero that is but that is a name solution that is not what we are looking for uh, when we solve for this the solution is an eigenvector which corresponds to the uh, smallest eigenvalue of a transpose a that is what uh, uh, total least squares uh, does so what we, uh, all you have to do is find the a matrix and find the eigenvalue decomposition and it will give you the um, the p vector basically so to recap there are two co common op optimization problems that we saw in this uh, part of the lecture for camilla calibra calibration the first problem statement is if you are able to uh, represent the um, problem in ax minus b form then the least square uh, solution can be represented in the uh, in in this form uh, which is the closed form solution um, however if you are able to represent the a matrix in this uh, form uh, if you want to minimize uh, something like this then the non trivial solution as we saw is ax equals to ax equals to 0 where a will be 0 but that's not what we are looking for mm, the actual solution will be the eigenvalue decomposition of a, a transpose a um, where we, we, we will represent the first uh, column of v will represent the the original um, transformed sorry not the original the image uh, uh, coordinates uh, and and so these are the two main uh, com optimization problems to be solved using linear least squares as well as uh, total least squares and um, yeah that's it from this lecture uh, we have seen how we can use linear least squares as well as uh, total least squares to estimate camera parameters in the next lecture uh, in the next part of the lecture we will talk more about how uh, uh, there are different techniques as well um, yeah until then uh, see you thank you